Hey friends, I think you're going to love this video and I'll tell you why. It prompted me to really take a good look at the Visconti decks that I have. I have two more that I'm not showcasing here. And um, I finally got a grasp on them. <laughs> well, <laughs> at least for the moment. Now, what inspired all of this was receiving as a gift Marco Benedetti's personal Visconti deck. Now, I uh, showed that I received, I, I, uh, I purchased the Via Veal, and when I received the Via Veal, he had told me ahead of time that he was sending me two gifts um, to supplement my collection so that I would have everything that he created. And one of them was his personal deck. Now, as far as I know, his personal deck is not for sale. He created it for himself, and uh, a couple of people found out that he had it, I guess, and, and they asked him, you know, to sell it to them too, and so he did. And so it exists, but it's not, I don't know if it's one that's readily available. However, just like his Atea deck, that really inspired me to take out the two other Atea decks that I've had for decades and never really did anything with. His Visconti deck is doing the same thing. It prompted me to pull out my better Visconti decks to take a good look at them and, and, and to really look at them almost for the first time and really see and understand and really grasp what I'm looking at. And uh, every single time Marco sends me something, it prompts me to look at what I already have in a whole new light with whole new appreciation. Okay, the four decks that I'm perusing today are of course Marco's personal Visconti deck, the Tarocchi Visconti Sforza by um, Il Menighello, Visconti Madrone deck by Loba Scarabeo, and the uh, also known as Carrie Yale deck, and then the uh, Visconti Madrone Cariel deck by um, U.S. Game Systems Inc. So I have two decks that are s the same. One is a the, the US, U.S. Games uh, deck is a facsimile deck. So the condition the cards are in are what you get. So for example, this would be the Ace of Swords. Okay. The U.S. the uh, Los Scarabeo deck, which is the same deck, they just chose to clean it up and showcase how it would have looked with the silver leaf and the gold leaf. The uh, Il Menighello deck is a facsimile copy of a collection of cards in the Visconti Sforza Canon, as is Marco's. Now, from what I understand, through the years, the, I, th I think I read somewhere that the Visconti Sforza clan, there are like 15 decks that exist in varying degrees of completion. I don't know if any of them are really complete. And so from those 15 decks, when publishers make an, you know, an effort to recreate them for us, um, they pick and choose from among the different decks to complete the deck because one deck may be missing this card and another deck may be missing another card. And so the decks that come to us as a Visconti Sforza deck may not really be the way it ever looked in real life because it, 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 cards are coming from all different Visconti Sforza decks throughout you know, the uh, hundreds of years that the Visconti Sforza clan existed, right? the original deck that might have been created as cards got damaged or lost. They kept them in the family. It's, it's not like today when we have playing cards and we lose a, lose a card, we either toss it completely or we'll just use it for a craft or something like that. But we're not attached to regular playing cards because they're inexpensive, right? Unless they're handmade, we just toss them. But for the Visconti Sforza clan, these were beautiful works of art, very expensive, embellished with silver and gold leaf. And so if a card got damaged or if a card got lost, or as new cards were 
add it to the, the uh, tarot of war, right? They would add new cards throughout the, throughout the years from different artists a hundred years later or whatever. I hope I made that, I hope that I made that make sense. Okay, so um, I'm going to show Marco's deck in conjunction with three other decks and the, uh, how they compare and what I learned in the process of doing, of doing this comparison. Okay, so Marco's deck is on the far right. It's a petite size, so although it is a facsimile deck, the cards were photographed and reduced to be a usable contemporary size deck. Now, this video is only, only going to show the um, higher order cards, the triumph cards, because I'll be here all day and night if I do the whole deck. But I, I might show the pips at the end. The second deck I'm showing to its left is the Il Minigello, um, to Rocky Visconti Sforza. This one is by Los Scarabeo, and it was the, uh, it's also known, it's called the Visconti Sforza, excuse me, the Visconti Madrone Tarot, different family, but it's also known as the Cary Yale Visconti. And as I mentioned, um, it, it, it takes the, the existing cards and makes an effort to bring them up to the beauty and luster that they must have been. And then this is the same deck published by U.S. Games Systems, Inc. And it's where the cards are the original cards, because there's a few that are not original. Um, where the cards are original um, they're, you know, facsimile cards, so they're in the condition that they're, they're in. So for the Fool, Marco chose this representation of the Fool, which is in keeping with the Fool that is in the, the uh, Il Minigello deck. And you can see that they're both facsimile decks. We see the unfortunate pinhole that someone in the course of the family's history must have like thumbtacked these cards to a wall. Oh my God, can you imagine? So we have all the, all the you know, mistakes and the damage to the cards. Now, you may say, <laughs> if these are both, you know, the same deck, the, the Visconti Madrone deck, then why would they have two cards that are not the same? And this is the second video that I've done on this, on, on, on these cards. It was, I was 28 minutes in pondering why on earth <laughs> before I realized that these were the missing cards. When these two decks, which are the same deck, right? Are missing or have two different cards for a particular card it's because they both had to be recreated because they were missing they were no longer part of the collect you know they they had been lost in the uh, Madrone deck now the reason I figured it out was because as I was really looking at this card in particular by US game systems I realized that these cards really look like they, they could not have been authentic. I mean, come on, we have a, we have a dog in the fool card of an Italian deck? Come on. I mean, a, a, you know, I'm talking about Italian decks from the 1400s. I mean, this is a TDM convention, right? We wouldn't have seen this in a, an Italian deck of this period of time. But this one stumped me because I thought this was I thought this was authentic because it looks so it looks genuine. It's a much better if you're looking to get a copy of the Madrone and you want a facsimile, well then I guess you're gonna have to go with the US Game Systems Inc. However, the missing cards that they have are kind of I don't know, they're they, they don't fit, you know. Whereas the Los Scarabeo, not only do they bring it up to the luster of like silver and gold leaf. The, the, rec the recreated cards are much 
much better rep representations. Okay, for the Magician card, once again, Marco's deck. Use the same source as the Elena Gello deck. Now I realize that you know even you know even though this is a reduced size, it's not a facsimile in the sense that it's not exactly the same size. It's copied and then reduced. But I really am grateful to have um, a personal sized deck that to be used because I never use these. I never use these decks. Um, one, it's such a pain in the derriere to put them in order because they have. Uh, you know, the virtue cards that, you know, put in there and they're, you know, and sometimes they're hard to distinguish, you know. Um, but at any rate, when I do use, when I, when I have used this one um, f for readings, you know, I limit it to three cards or five cards, but with Marcos, I can, I can do my signature spread. Okay, so as I mentioned, the Magician card, or Le Betelier of the, the, um, uh, El Bugato, I guess it would be more authentically being Italian. They're the same as Il Manigello. And then these two, again, because they're different, are creations. Now we know this is bogus because no deck of the, fifth, the 1400s Italian would have the four suits on the table because it's not what that card represented. So this is a telltale that it's a bogus well, it's a recreation made to look like it could have been authentic, but we know it's not. And this is more in keeping with what we would have expected. So this deck really fooled me because I really thought, I really thought it was uh, authentic for most of the cards. Okay, now here we have Charity. Now I think because Charity comes in, in the spot of where the female pope would have come. And in the Madrone deck, the female pope just doesn't exist. So I think charity was the card that might have at one point been in the place of the female pope. But Marco's deck gives us the, the, uh, the um, Faith, Hope, and Charity cards, right? In addition to the female Pope card, for example, so that we could still read with it. And if we don't want to have the, the virtues, we just remove them. Okay, so here we have uh, Charity, as I mentioned, that I think some decks had in place of the female Pope. And the Visconti Madrone, it was, if you look really, really close... In, in these two cards, you can see initially it looks like a mirror, but if you really look closely, you can tell that it's a cup because you can see, you can see the lip of the cup. And so I think they did it poorly, but they made, in, you know, in the low Scarabeo, maybe it really looked like that, you know. Um, I would have thought it would have looked a little better, but. I don't know. But this really was a cup. You can tell that it was a cup if you look at it really closely. So this is charity, I think, in place of the female pope. Because the Madrone deck by US Game Systems, Inc. left out the female pope. However, in order to be able to be read, the Los Scarabeo deck include the charity card and gave us a creation of the female pope, which could have fooled me, but um, I don't think it, you know, it's not authentic as it doesn't exist in the uh, US game systems, which is, which only reproduces, you know, or recreates the cards that were in that deck. I hope I made that clear. Okay, so here's the female pope. And, Marco's female pope and um, Il Manigello seem to be from the same source, although the color of her garb is a little bit different. So, 
So I'm not really sure. Maybe Ilmenic Yellow Attic Color, I don't know. And the Los Scarabeo just created a female Pope in order for us to be able to use the cards. I'm sorry I'm not holding it like at a distance. I guess I should be. But it's easier to see the details if I bring it closer. Okay, here's the Empress. It seems as though, once again, Los Scarabeo and Marco had the same inspiration to use the same deck for the Empress card. And this card is an original Madrone card because they're the same. So neither of these were recreated because they both look basically the same. But you see the difference in the facsimile deck, which is the silver is all tarnished and dead, and the Los Scarabeo deck really shows you what it looked like. Beautiful, right? The Emperor. I think Marco has, yeah, Marco has provided us with a few additional cards, like he did with the Charles the Sixth. For those of you who saw my Charles the Sixth video, or those of you who were inspired to buy it, which I think you, it's a must. Uh, Marco's Charles the Sixth deck is a must. But um, in that deck, for the cards that were lost over time, he replaced certain cards with other cards from that same region and that same period of time. And so what Marco has done is in this deck um, has supplied us with al alternative cards. So this is either for the female, excuse me, for the Empress or the Emperor. I can't decide. I can't tell which one that was for. He looks like there might be facial hair. I don't know. So this I think might have been for the, oh yeah, the Emperor, because look, it's got, it's got the globe, the orb. So this would have been an alternate to the emperor. I, uh, I prefer this one. So um, I'm not sure which one Marco would originally intend it for his personal choice, but I, I'm going with this one. Which is similar to the one, or this is the same one that Il Manigello chose. And the Madrone Emperor, these are indeed the originals, you know, um, because they match. Now this one, um, I think this is faith in place of the Pope. So we have faith. Now we know that the Pope was not in the Madrone deck because U.S. Game Systems has skipped it. The Los Scarabeo deck offers us a Pope, but really, Faith was the card in place of the Pope. And what I think both Marco and Il Manigello did was find us Visconti Sforza deck that had a Pope, and just, you know, over the years, you know, picked a deck that had the Pope and then used that one. So Marcos is the only one that offers us the virtue plus the card that it might have been in place of. And the Los Scarabeo Pope, which is a good fake, but it's not an original, but it is a good fake. So the Los Scarabeo Madrone deck um, really is, a, it, you know, it's, if you really want to like tune into that period of time and look at how beautiful the cards would have looked, it offers you the virtues that would have been in the deck plus creations of cards that were just didn't exist in that deck. The Madrone is solid because, well, solid in the sense that it's just a facsimile deck and it just recreates the cards you know, that existed in the ones that didn't exist, which are considerable, they recreated them. They had an artist recreate them. I think it was probably somebody like um, Scapini because it's got that look. But they're really obvious fakes. You know, they're, they're obvious. The Los Scarabeo deck, I think, does a much better job of creating missing cards in, in, in a truer fashion. Okay, here we have the lover card. 
Marco and um, El Menegello appear to have chosen the same lover card. I'm trying to keep track here. <laughs> There's so many cards, it just gets confusing. And the Madrone cards, these are the original images. For the chariot, El Menegello and Marco both chose the same Visconti chariot card, which differs from the Madrone, which is an original to the Madrone. Okay, the Justice card again. Marco and Il Menegello have chosen the same source for the Justice card. And isn't that a delicious color? Look at that delicious blue, saturated blue. And Justice, for whatever reason, was not in the Madrone deck and so both Los Scarabeo and US Game Systems Inc. just created a card with, you know, using a modern day artist. Again, I think the Los Scarabeo did a better job of keeping it looking like an authentic card. This you can tell is just not, not legit. All right, the Hermit card. And I think for this, there's another card. I think Marco provided a card with the Sun card that I think sometimes is associated with, with the Hermit, even though the Sun is in it. And I really love this portrayal of the Hermit. It's, it's you know, Diogenes and like I, it looks like a barrel. And... Uh, you know, the uh, uh, Alexander the Great, you know, a great conqueror and leader of men, uh, you know, pays homage to Diogenes and says, you know, what can I do for you? Because he's so almighty, he can do anything, right? What can I do for you, sir? And uh, Diogenes says, well, not, not anything except you could step aside because you're blocking the sun. And I love that story for the uh, hermit. And I'll probably, I'll definitely be discussing that in the Top Tarot Trump video when uh, it's when uh, Masha releases her video on the Hermit, which is next. So I will definitely be discussing that. But um, I just love that story. So this is an alternate for me. I don't know if Marco intended it for the Sun because the Sun is here. So it could be representing an alternate to the Sun card, but it could be representing an alternate to the Hermit card. So I'm just keeping that in mind. But I do ultimately prefer this Hermit because I like seeing the hourglass and there's no confusion. We know that this is the Hermit. And Amiel um, Menichello chose the same. Visconti Sforza deck. And both of the Madrone cards are fabrications, modern day fabrications. However, I do appreciate that they both put in the hourglass rather than a lantern. Oh, and the story, of course, I do want to mention with Diogenes is Diogenes you know, if this was indeed representing the hermit, Diogenes, I think it makes sense that he became the hermit in TDM because Diogenes was said to travel the earth looking for an honest man with a lantern. And so I think um, it makes sense that some of the TDM, well, the TDM deck kind of changed the hourglass. Maybe they misunderstood it. Maybe they misunderstood the hourglass and thought it was 
Diogenes because they had seen a representation of Diogenes, as I just showed you. And they might have thought it was Diogenes. And so they added the lantern, thinking that the hourglass was a lantern. I, I'm, I'm convinced stuff like that happened in tarot. Okay, here's the Wheel of Fortune. Again, Il Menegello and Marco have chosen the same source for their Wheel of Fortune. And these two decks representing the Madrone are creations. Either the deck never existed, the, excuse me, either the Wheel of Fortune never existed in this deck or it's just missing or lost, you know, to time. But again, the Los Scarabeo is a much better, a much better fake. I mean, come on. Who's that fooling? Nobody. Okay, we have Fortitude. Now... Marco offers two options for fortitude. And I prefer the one that appears apparently in the Madrone. Il Manichello chose this one to represent the fortitude image. But I, uh, for now at least, I'm skipping that one and I'm going to use this in its place. I may change my mind, but I don't know. And then the Madrone deck. Is also using this one that I prefer. So Marco offered us the Madrone card in place of the Sforza. Okay, the hangman. Marcos and Il Menegello chose the same deck image. And the Madrone, for whatever reason, was missing. The Los Scarabeo, interestingly, added money, which did appear in, 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 you know, in some early Italian decks. This one, I don't think it fools anyone. I, I really don't think that the US game system's creations of the missing cards, I just don't think it's up to snuff. Okay. Um, the death card, again, Marco offers us two options. One on a horse, which is the Madrone image, and this one. I'm not sure which one I prefer. I really don't know which one I prefer. Which one do you guys prefer? I, I don't know. I think for now I'm going to commit to this one. But the beauty of Marco's decks when you get options is that you can come back and change your mind, you know, and just pick it, pick it, pick the other one if I want later. Okay, so this was a, this one is also the one that um, Il Manichello chose. And this is the Madrone, which was the other option that Marco offered. Okay, we have a few for temperance. I think Marco included this one for his personal choice, but I prefer this one. It's more familiar to me. I just like it better. So I'm going to use this one. I apologize for, I'm just trying to keep these straight because you know at the end of the day I got to put them all together and it's just much better for me if I take the time to do it while I'm doing it. So we know that this was uh, Either the Visconti or the Sforza Castle was on a cliff, which seems to be represented in a lot of their cards, which is kind of interesting. And Temperance and Temperance here are recreations because they're not the same. But again, I think the Los Scarabeo option is much more convincing. I mean, it's got the 
family emblem, you know, in the dress. And she just, I don't know. She looks sick. Okay, the devil card was not in any of the card, in any of the decks. So, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. We know that the devil and the tower appeared in decks for the common man, both the Budapest and the Rosenwald from the early 1500s. Both of them had the devil and the tower card. Now, the earliest Visconti cards, uh, Visconti Sforza decks, you know, from the 1400s, maybe at that point, you know, 50 years earlier, maybe the devil and the Maybe the devil and the tower card was not in the tower, the tarot canon at that point. So all of these cards representing the devil for across the board, since no devil or tower exists in any authentic Visconti or Visconti Sforza deck, or just or recreations or just creations. So this is the one that, you know, um, one of the ones that Marco offers he also offered this one, which we've seen in a number of other decks. I think it might have been in the, might have been a Rosenwald, it might have been from the Rosenwald. But I don't, I never care for this at all. So I'm skipping this one and I'm using this one. Now, I don't know if Marco created this on his own or if he took it from another source, but I do like this one better. And it's authentic enough that it's fooling me, so. I'm using this one in, in Marco's deck. Yeah, the Il Manigello, you know, it just, it's just, it's a phony baloney. Phony baloney. And this one's not a very good one either. This is one of the fails in the Los Scarabeo, and this is a total fail. I mean, come on. Okay, the tower, as I mentioned, is another card that does not appear in any of the Visconti decks, Visconti Sforza decks. Marco offers us two options. This one, which I believe came from the Charles VI deck. And this one, which like the devil card, he may have he may have done created this on his own or taken elements from a few things. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I love the um, Charles VI deck and I like this card, but Eh, I, I do like it, so I may in time switch it back out. But I think for now, I'm intrigued by this one. Although, I mean, you can tell that these horses are, you know, in the night and all. Yeah, it's, you know, it's not quite authentic looking, but I think it's kind of interesting. So I'm going to go with it for now. But this would have been a, a bit more authentic. And these, these three are all phony balonies. Of these three, I do like the Los Scarabeo one best because it seems most authentic. Okay, now, the Virtue Hope which the name of in Italian is very similar to star. I think so. So hope appears in the place of the star in the Madrone. Because the Madrone deck doesn't show us a star card, it only shows us the hope card. So it's my belief that this virtue was in place of the star card and eventually the star replaced the virtue card. So we, you know, Marco did give us the hope card. And he also gave us a star card. In fact, he gave us a few star cards. This is the one that I chose to go with, with the deck. But Marco has also given us this star card. This star card which, we, you know, we've seen this in other decks, maybe the Charles VI, I'm not sure. So we have these two other star car options, but I, I may switch it out with this one in time, but for now, I prefer to use this star card, which 
is the same as El Manigello's source. Again, we see the cliff where the castle, the Visconti Sforza castle would have been. So their deck, you know, they, they take the opportunity to show a reference to their location. And then this is the hope card. And because in the Madrone deck, and because there was no star car in the Madrone deck, the US game systems deck does not provide it, but Los Scarabeo in an effort to give us a intact card, an intact deck that we can use, I think they give us a decent fake. Okay, the moon card. And we have a few moon options by Marco. But I have opted for this one. Again, it has a reference to the home of the cat, the, the location of the castle, the Visconti Sforza Castle. And it's in keeping with the one that Il Minigello chose. And neither of the Madrones are the same, which means that it was missing from the Madrone deck. And we have several sun cards as options. I chose this one to keep in the deck, but Marco offered us this one shows oh, the two great philosophers talking and then we have the star above them and we have this might this this looks more like the sun card with Apollo so, oh this must be yeah oh okay duh this is Apollo okay so these are the sun cards if I said star I apologize so these are the options for the star card but I am going with this one which is in keeping with this one by Il Manigello. And we know that these are fast simile decks because we see the damage to the cards in the same spots and, and also those unfortunate thumbtack holes. And when Los Scarabeo recreated or created the, the Sun card, they, they had this deck, they had this card in mind, apparently. And this is the most unfortunate representation. I don't like it. I guess you can tell I don't like that deck. Okay, the judgment card. Marco gives us two options. You know, I'm not sure which one I'm going with. I really like the saturated blue and I like the way this one I like this one a lot. I don't know. But I like this one because it does look more like a judgment, you know. I'm not sure. Tell me which one you think I should go with, guys. <laughs> um, I'm not really sure which one I'm going to go with. Il Manichello shows this one. And the Madrone deck, actually, this, this image, this alternative image for the Judgment card that Marco gave us is obviously the Madrone deck. It's the same card. So I don't know. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. I think I might go with this one for now. And the last card is the world card. And Marco chose the Madrone world because we see it here. And 
Well, we can't, he, Marco also offers us this one. So Marco offers us two world cards. This one, in keeping with Los Scarabeos, ex, ex, excuse me, Il Manigello's. And then this option, which is the Madrone. I think I prefer this one. So this will be the world card that I use when I use Marco's deck. So I am so glad and grateful to Marco for giving me, you know, gifting me with this deck because it really forced me to, to look at these Visconti. Let me pause and flip the camera. It really forced me to look at these cards and understand finally where the virtue cards came in the sequence. I look like I look like awful tonight. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but it really forced me to take a good look and to finally get a grasp on what I was looking at and where these some of these images came from and then understand, you know, which ones were creations by modern artists because they simply didn't exist, you know. And uh, as far as the as far as the uh, pip decks, the pip portions, I'll show you quickly. The um, U.S. Game Systems deck. just shows the deck as it exists in its current condition. They didn't fancy it up. They didn't clean it up. Um, the coin, for the Ace of Coins, I have. I have the coin, and I'll pull it out before I end it. But unfortunately, in the U.S. Game Systems Inc. Madrone deck, you can't even see it, you know. However... In the where is it? In the Los Scarabeo deck, which we saw consistently, that it brought, it just you know cleaned them up and made them appear the way they would have appeared in real life. When we look at the Ace of Coins, we see. We see their coin, and I have this coin, so I'm going to pull it out and show you. And that's how it really would have looked. And it's a real pity, you know, it's a real pity that, you know, with the facsimile deck of U.S. game systems, you don't get any, any sense of the splendor, none at all. So sometimes, you know, Facsimile decks are great, and sometimes they're not, you know? I don't know. I think this would be an occasion where um, it's not so great. I'm glad I have it, because I know what the deck looks like, how it, how it looks, but I'm happy to know how it was meant to look. So there's a time and place for every kind of deck. And um, the Visconti Sforza Pips. By um, Il Manigello are clean, you know, and Marcos pips are nice and clean, also. And let's see if his ace of now his ace of coins is I think more like the Visconti Sforza that Il Manigello has. Let me look. Yes. So the Il Manigello Visconti Sforza coin doesn't have the dragon or the snake or whatever that thing is, the serpent, and neither does Marcos. They, they, they use the same source for their pips. But I do have the coin that was circulated during the time that the Madrone deck was created. Let me pull it and show it to you. I've shown it to you in past videos. 
unfortunately, I didn't realize it was going to come in a case, but I think when certain coins are authenticated and they're like considered rare and, you know, they have to prove that they are what they are. They come in this case and it's impossible to take the case off. And if I take the case off, then I can no longer prove that it was authentic. So I had bought it hoping I could hold it in my hand, but I can't. But you can see the serpent. You can see it. So isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. It says um, 1466 to 1476, Italy, Milan, Galeazzo Maria Sforza. And that's the other side of the coin. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you, Marco, for sending me this beautiful deck because boy, oh boy, it really, it really inspired me to take a look at all the cards that I have from the Visconti Sforza Madrone clan. And I had two others that I didn't pull. I aren't good. Re I don't think they were good recreations to begin with, so I didn't even bother. Um, I didn't think they were good publications, so I didn't bother to pull them out. And uh, I really finally have a grip. <laughs> finally have a grip. So until next time, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, please. And uh, subscribe if you don't already. Until next time, peace, stay well, be kind, and do no harm.